the most important uh, uh, trajectory of uh, this lecture, how changed the leading cities, how changed uh, guiding cities uh, on the trajectory of, uh, uh, of uh, uh, evolution of world economy system. The first leading and guiding city was Venice. The second one, Antwerp. The third one uh, was uh, Genoa. And uh, we arrived to the uh, age of Amsterdam. I spoke about why was uh, so good, uh, so good uh, peculiarities of Amsterdam to become a leading city. One of the most important, uh, it's a very old uh, commercial and industrial center of Europe. Started the career of uh, low country because uh, the Netherlands only the northern part of the historical uh, geographical area, low country, which uh, large from the boundary of Denmark until the basin of Paris. Historically much larger than the Netherlands and Belgium. It's a historical geographical area. Uh, one of the most important, the great tradition, great commercial and great uh, tradition of urbanism. Uh, and uh, the second one, industrial tradition, which mean, uh, which mean uh, uh, textile industry. 80% uh, of the of the traditional uh, traditional uh, economy. Uh, very important uh, advantage of this area is openness to the uh, to the uh, to the uh, how the name how the name is uh, it's a sea based uh, trade of Europe and good connection to the direction of Mediterranean area. Not by chance are uh, low country and la later. The Netherlands became a shelter. Come in, no problem. Uh, we discussed about the condition of exam. We will repeat. I will repeat at the end of today's lecture. Good. And uh, one of the most important uh, indicator and the factor of uh, uh, heyday of uh, the Netherlands became shelter of refugees. I remember this was this was the last slide of last week lecture. Uh, the first wave of immigration from Jews from, from Iberian Peninsula. Very interesting the story. Somebody visited in Amsterdam? You visited. Uh, it's possible you visited in uh, Portuguese synagogue? Portuguese synagogue? No? Visited. Here. This is the Portuguese synagogue, too, inside and outside. Uh, very interesting story because majority of Jews came from Iberian Peninsula, came from Spain. He and uh, she were Spaniards, according to citizenship. But they falsified their identity. Why? Because on the time was a war, unfolded a war between Spain and the Netherlands. Therefore, Good adaptation strategy was uh, uh, for immigrant Spaniard uh, Jews that falsified identity. Everybody knew from the contemporaries that came from Iberian Peninsula. But in the Iberian Peninsula, there were two states, Spain, enemy of Dutch people, and Portugal. No any conflict, political and the military conflict. Therefore, uh, Jews immigrant falsified their identity. Why? Because a Jew is walking on the street and uh, speaking to the uh, fearful and uh, and and uh, uh, and uh, uh, very angry Dutch people. I am not Spain. I am not Spaniard. I, I emigrated from and uh, afraid and uh, and uh, and uh, um, escaped from Spain. It's very complicated. Much better solution. You came from Iberia? Yes, I, I came. And from, you are Spaniard? No, 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 I am not Spaniard, I am Portuguese. And solve the problem. Therefore, the most famous synagogue, one of the most famous synagogue, a Portuguese synagogue, named after the falsifying, after the falsification. Okay, the second one, uh, citizens of Antwerp. You remember the second leading city of uh, forming European economy and the global economy was Antwerp. And the long 80 years long uh, um, independence war, a 
Spanish army took under siege city of Antwerp. But uh, uh, under the direction of Alexander Farnese, it's very talented and, uh, and peaceful general. It's quite rare in this profession. And uh, Antwerp, on the second day of siege, capitulated. Therefore, the richest citizen of Antwerp, it's, there is a possibility leaving the city. And the capital and the best manager and businessman of Antwerp moved to Amsterdam. Why is so important in the career and in the, uh, in the rising up of Amsterdam? Because not only lost the most important rival in Low Country, but the capital of Antwerp in the human and the physical capital moved to Amsterdam. And Huguenots. You remember the story of Huguenots. It's French Calvinist. And uh, French Calvinist in the 17th century, at the end of 16th and the beginning of 17th century, uh, formed an uh, uh, independent status, religious and, uh, and uh, political independent status inside of the inside of the France. And when cancelled the independent status with the uh, cancelling of an edict of Nantes, which was the uh, political declaration of uh, independent status, the religious status of Huguenots, 200,000 French citizens left the country. One third moved to England, one third moved to uh, Netherlands, and one third moved to German uh, Protestant uh, principalities, like Bavaria, like Prussia, and uh, uh, like other, other for Saxony, for example, other Protestant German principality. Sorry? I, I think there is a philosopher, uh, Baruch Spinoza, and he like comes from... Yeah, Baruch Spinoza, yeah. Is he like, uh, like a Jew family? Yeah, he was a, he, he was a unique person. Baruch Spinoza was a great, one of the greatest philosophers of the, uh, uh, of the 17th century. And uh, you know which was his, uh, his profession? This was a, a lamp maker for uh, eyeglasses and for microscope and, uh, and therefore he died because it uh, aspirated a lot of uh, small uh, glass uh, pieces uh, which uh, poisoned uh, the lungs. And very interesting because probably you know uh, in the scientific and academic life overrepresented the Jewish people. Why? Why were they represented the Jewish people? Uh, when started the mandatory elementary education in the Jewish community? 2000 years ago. 2000 in Europe. 200 or one and a half hundred years ago. It's a great advantage. Focusing to the, to the reading and discussing and negotiation and so on and so on. Uh, first, but very interesting, in the traditional Jewish period, no high intellectual performance except Spinoza. Why? Because the focus was the Bible and the religious problems. And very interesting, when uh, our name is, uh, uh, is uh, uh, in the 19th century, in consequence of secularization, you know which is the secularization, the division of the public and religious institutions and the author. And very interesting, when this well-educated, uh, text-focused mentality of the Jewish community turned to the direction, scientific and academic work, efficiency of the, uh, in consequence of great pressure, and great tradition of the intellectual, uh, intellectual, uh, intellectual activities, uh, somehow it's a great up. Therefore, a lot of Jews and intellectual became able to high intellectual performances. It changed the object, changed the subject of activity. Baruch Spinoza was exception, was exception. 
But the uh, other side, other, other interesting information uh, about the traditional Jewish community is that uh, in the early modern 16th, 17th, and 18th century, the best translated whole of Europe and the Mediterranean area were Jews. My question was. Partly. And partly, a Jewish people live in diaspora. Some party, mostly some part of Christian family. Same family. Therefore, socialization, a young Jew's uh, child lived two years in Tunis, in North Africa, two years in Istanbul, two years in Serbia, and at then learned at least five or six languages. Not by chance, the most important translator of the Ottoman Sultan in Istanbul, and the Pope in Rome, and the Spanish King in Madrid, Jews. Okay, turn back to this story. Good. Uh, and the last one, uh, Holland Ganger, the most important Holland Ganger, it's a guest worker, of course, were Germans. And very interesting, there is a, uh, somehow a slope, a working slope in west and eastern part of Europe. In Dutch Republic, in the Netherlands, the guest worker Germans. In German, the guest worker a Polish people. In Poland, the guest worker Russia. This is the slope. Good. Uh, about the Portuguese, Portuguese Jews, uh, English pamphleter uh, wrote the Jews and other foreigners having opened their own world wide commerce to them. It's true in the Mediterranean area because uh, Iberian Jews came to uh, Spain and they knew the system, commercial system of Mediterranean Sea. And when the Dutch sailor and the Dutch owner of great owner of uh, fleet would like to participate, would like to introduce to the Mediterranean Sea the, the best counselor of them were the Jews because knew the system of Mediterranean work. Jews like uh, then the oil on the water records the form of the water, but, do, but does not dissolve in the water. Uh, probably uh, you lived in abroad. Recently you are living abroad. And very interesting, I lived uh, four years in different countries, mainly in Europe, in uh, Switzerland, uh, France, uh, uh, the Netherlands, Germany, Czech Republic, uh, Poland, a different part. Very interesting, uh, foreign people who didn't integrate the local people, much higher the sensibility for small changes. And very interesting, when Dutch Republic, the Netherlands, rising up, the Jewish trader concentrated and, and settled down in Amsterdam. And very interesting, when England rose up, the Dutch people moved to London. Because a foreign people, much more sensible, no large network, no roots, no deep roots in local place, therefore the flexibility and mobility much higher, much better, and much sensible. Good. This is the most important migration roads in Europe. For example, very typical escaping from Balkanic Peninsula on the time of Ottoman invasion and Polish people eastward and Huguenots in different directions. These are the most important early modern times uh, way of emigration. It's a quite typical map of uh, immigration source of Amsterdam. Basically, came from the uh, southern part of uh, Low Country, from Belgium, and northern uh, agra agrarian area of the Netherlands. Uh, somebody visited in Le Warden. Le Warden. It's a uh, northern, uh, quite a great uh, city of the Netherlands. It's uh, Le Warden is a uh, uh, it's a capital 
of uh, of uh, I don't know I, I don't remember uh, one of the northern northeast uh, uh, county of uh, of uh, uh, the Netherlands, Leuwarden, and in the central square of Leuwarden there is a sculpture, a sculpture of coal, a cattle. It's unbelievable, lucky people. No politician, no uh, great general, a coal. This is around the animal forming a unity of nation. This is the best option. I am jealous uh, for the people of the Leuwarden because in the life of uh, this uh, Dutch county, the most important, the dairy economy. It's a making of cheese. Who is the most important actor of the cheese? A coal. Unbelievable lucky people. Good. Uh, migration of domestic servant and day laborer. Okay. It's a good example the great diversity of Amsterdam and generally the Netherlands. Uh, in uh, Amsterdam there are 25 Roman Catholic Church. Uh, I told to you uh, uh, whole of the Dutch Republic, the proportion of Calvinists, only 20 percent. 30 percent are Rome Catholic, Rome Catholic uh, believer, and the Scottish Reform, Valor Reform, Presbyterian, Episcopalian, Lutheranian, Ramosan, Melanie, and Jewish. Everybody. It's a it's a very tolerant, very tolerant mosaic of different religion. Why is so important the religion? Because each historical period, there are and there were a guiding force, which is the most important guiding force of, uh, of a person and the contemporary community. And very interesting, the story of Europe. If we are looking at Europe, a European history, until the 17th century, the general concept of Europe, a Christian one. Why? Because the most important guiding force, religion. Religion, and the second one, a social status. Nobleman, peasant, or bourgeois. This is the most important guiding force. And very interesting, at the end of 17th century, decrease as a general concept of Christendom, and rose a euro, a scientific or geographical concept because a religion as a guiding force of everyday life, respect and position, it's done. And to the end of 18th century appear a new guiding force, a nationalism, a nationalism. But if we are looking at history, it's possible at the beginning of my course, I told to you, uh, time by time, write a new history book. Not because uh, so many new inventions found by historians. No, each generation necessarily define the relation to the past. Relation to the past. Because a generation, I have uh, four uh, children. And very interesting, the first of my uh, child was born in 1990 in the 20th century. And the last one, it's uh, uh, 208. An unbelievable great distance there are between them. My youngest boy was born in the world of internet and the smartphone. And there is a communication problem between them. Because uh, my uh, oldest, uh, uh, oldest um, uh, daughter there is, he was born almost before the internet or at the dawn of internet and uh, he used a traditional cable-based phone. And discussion between them uh, somehow uh, and some situation necessary a translator. Okay, uh, good. Uh, look at the United Provinces, because very important to mention, recently if somebody visiting the Netherlands, uh, Netherlands recently a kingdom, but on the time of formation of United Provinces was Republic, it's Dutch Republic. Uh, 
look at this republic. Holland, Genoa and Venice where the state is powerless and poor, although the individuals are wealthy. Wrote Turgo, uh, a French, uh, a pra French uh, minister, uh, prime minister and uh, uh, minister of finance in the, in the middle of the 18th century. Generally, we can describe the Netherlands, modern country with archaic in institution. Two basic pillars, Radwan Stad, Council of State, and State General. These are the most important pillars of uh, institution. Republic of United Provinces existed, uh, uh, formed at the beginning of 80 years war, and uh, fall down in consequence of invasion of Napoleon, Napoleonian wars, you know, at the end of uh, uh, 18th century. Two capitals. If you open a geographical guidebook, you can find information which uh, city is capital of Amsterdam, uh, capital of the Netherlands. One sign, Hague, other Amsterdam. But I found uh, such uh, article that two capital, Hague and Amsterdam. Why? Because Hague, a uh, political capital, a political with parliament, state general, and uh, uh, and. Uh, buildings of ministries and the uh, prime minister. Like, for example, the position of Haag in the history of the Netherlands, similar to Washington, the Washington. Or possibly you remember the history of Western Germany uh, on the age of uh, Cold War. Uh, somebody know which was the capital, recently Berlin is the capital of Germany, unified Germany, but before the unification, uh, which uh, city was a capital? of Germany. Nobody? Bonn. Bonn. A very small, very small city. And its name a uh, capital village. Really capital village. No more, only the institution of the Western German uh, government. No more. A little bit same in the case of Hull. But Amsterdam, a real giant, economic giant. Therefore, the majority of economic and political decision made in Amsterdam. Good. Two important actors was in Dutch political life. The first one, a prime minister, its name Grand Pensionary, one of the most famous, uh, Johan de Wiet, uh, from the second, uh, third of the uh, 17th century. And very important, a prime minister a prime minister of the uh, Dutch Republic was each case a prime minister of Holland. Holland is not the name of the whole of the country, only one county. One county. Why? Because the economic power, seven, seven counties formed the Dutch Republic, but Holland, the richest one, the tax income of whole of the country, 50% came from Holland. Therefore, there are some privilege to this county. And the prime minister of Holland was the prime minister whole of the country, like Johann de Witt. This was the republical institution. And because this country formed on the time of long war, Against the Spain, against the Spain. Therefore, necessary some one people who made the military decision on the fleet and on the continental army. This was the Stadthouder, Stadthouder, a governor, a governor, a little bit lower status than the king. It's a governor, and the one survival aristocratic family. Don, the oldest, uh, oldest, oldest uh, um, male person of the uh, one survivor family of uh, the Netherlands, uh, candidated the Stadthouder. This family name Orange Orania, which is the color of Orania, Orange, and which is the national color, Orange. Yeah, it came from the color of this family, of this family. 
Because, as I mentioned in the last lecture, majority of the nobility of the Netherlands massacred, slaughtered by Alba, uh, Prince Alba, Duke Alba the first, the third, at the beginning of uh, Independence War. Okay, this is some building, some very, very typical building in the last uh, week. I told you some short movie about the, uh, about the city landscapes. And political sense, the Netherlands appeared on the map of uh, Europe, uh, the closing peace, a peace treaty of the 30 years war. It's Obviously, it was a religious war, but uh, not a really religious war. A religious uh, problem was only one side of the long, uh, uh, 30 years long war. Uh, but anyway, the closing peace treaties uh, declared two new states on the map of Europe. One, the Netherlands. Somebody know which was the other country which uh, accepted in the international declaration the political status. Netherlands and which was the other one? No? Switzerland. Switzerland. Switzerland, you know the story of Switzerland. I lived in the Switzerland one and a half year. It's a very special country. Very special country. It's named early born national uh, country. Why? Because there are at least three official languages. German, French and Italian. And Reto Roman, it's a, uh, it's a very small minority living in the mountain area. And very interesting, somebody visited in Switzerland? Switzerland? Nobody? Switzerland. In, in which uh, Swiss area? Uh, Geneva. Where? Geneva. Genoa. And uh, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, did you visit in a in, uh, movie? What? Movie. Movie? movie. No. No. But unbelievable. Uh, I, I remember at the beginning of the 90s, I saw a uh, Pulp Fiction, uh, the second uh, movie of uh, Quentin Tarantino, in Swiss, Swiss movie. And in the Swiss movie, each uh, film, there is an original uh, soundtrack. But there are three lines of subtitle. French, Italian, and German. And the Pulp Fiction, there is a lot of discussion. And it, it was a great, uh, great operation. I tried to understand for listening to uh, original soundtrack and try to identify German, French, German, French, German, French. And unbelievable, unbelievable. It's a free line in three different languages. Good. Anyway, uh, it's, it's not a real national country because a lot of, uh, and very interesting, I, I asked my Swiss uh, colleagues which is the Swiss identity and told to me, uh, Alps, the mountain, but it's good, but it's uh, Austria, there is an Alp and uh, France, uh, there is an Alp. Therefore, it's not, not a real country, it's early born, early born uh, national state. Good. Uh, look at the status of uh, the Netherlands. This is the independent country, became an independent country, one of the most important uh, trading actors whole of the Europe. In which trading uh, direction could make the great money. The Baltic area is very important for, uh, for, for naval store, for uh, trading of grain and so and so, very important uh, basis, background of the, of the Dutch uh, uh, trader, but the great money made in Asian trade and American trade, Asian and American trade. After a uh, de declaration of independence, the next step, conquering the Asian and American trade. And the solution of the Dutch people, quite unique. Look at the first Asian trade. How capture the, A sorry, the Asian trade? So it's dry air. Look at the Asian trade. In the Asian trade, the most important rival are Portuguese. You remember 
Bartolomeu Diaz was who uh, the first reached a uh, southern part of the African continent, and Vasco da Gama sailed the first directly to India. Therefore, if somebody would like to occupy and conquer a uh, spice trade and the Asian trade, necessary to fight against a Portuguese. For Portuguese who discovered the trajectory of sailing around the Africa, saved the secrets. If somebody tried to uh, try to uh, spy in this area, the Portuguese killed them. Killed them. Therefore, spying, espionage, it was a very dangerous operation. But the first step for uh, Dutch people necessarily discover the good direction. The good direction. Uh, the most famous survivors of the espionage, the spying, was Jan van Richotet and Cornelius Houtman. Majority of Dutch uh, spies killed. These people survived close to the prison and the one rich Dutch trader ransom, paid the ransom for them, traveled back uh, to the Netherlands and started to organize a Dutch fleet to sailing the uh, uh, Indian Ocean. Uh, the first, uh, uh, first uh, Dutch operation followed the trajectory of uh, Portuguese, uh, Portuguese uh, sailor. But the most important decision had to be made by Cornelius Houtman, who organized the first uh, uh, Dutch operation in that case, that sailing in the Madagascar channel, you know this island named Madagascar, why? Because in the Madagascar channel, eastern coast of Africa and Madagascar, was the most important checking place of Portuguese. If somebody sailed into the channel, it's fire dawn. Fire dawn. Because it's controlled very heavily. This was the last uh, sailing line of the Portuguese, uh, Portuguese uh, commercial empire over Indian Ocean. Therefore, Cornelius Houtman made the best decision, sail directly on the open ocean. Therefore, the direction of the Dutch colonization, not India, but Indonesia. Not by chance, historically, Indonesia uh, was the most important colony of uh, uh, the Netherlands. And sail directly to Java and founded one uh, city which named Batavia. Batavia was a very small, very small Amsterdam with channels, artificial island in the island of Java. Somebody know which is the name of Batavia recently? Yeah. Jakarta. Unbelievable because the seed of the city, uh, well constructed, it's a chess mat uh, plane uh, construction. And recently, if somebody knows Jakarta, there is a downtown, American style, but outskirts, it's unbelievable, unbelievable. Uh, how the name is, uh, which is the, uh, which is the name of, uh, of uh, urban area, it's very bad constructed without, uh, without uh, uh, minimal, uh, minimal uh, public service and uh, how the name there is a, a special term uh, in uh, uh, about the Brazilian cities it's how the name is these outskirts it's poor favela yeah favela favela like outskirts and somebody know uh, recent populate because Batavia had uh, on the heavy period 5,000 inhabitants how many people how many people are living? 10 million. 20? 10 million. 10 million. Uh, to, my, to my last information, 20. But it depends which, uh, which is the size of the uh, suburb. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's possible, possible that the inside of the Jakarta only 
10 million, but with the suburbs, uh, it's 20 million. It's other, other, other league. Uh, because in Europe, in Europe, uh, the, the, the largest city is London or, or Paris uh, in 10 million. And but I don't know exactly which is the how many people living in in uh, but Moscow uh, similarly 10 million uh, similarly 10 million I yeah 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 yeah, yeah it's a very very difficult to define which is the real city which is the real city oh, good uh, and the second travel of Cornelius Hauptmann produced four. 100% of benefit. It's unbelievable. Um, you, you can take to the bank recently, how many persons? 10 person. 10 person benefit. And one travel was able to produce one, uh, 400 person. Look at the reaction. A Dutch reaction is quite a unique compared with the contemporary state. Formed and founded a private company and very important peculiarity of the Dutch colonization based on private company. Any other, the Russian, the French, the Spanish and, uh, and uh, English colonization, state-based colonization. Exceptional. In the case of the Dutch Republic, organized a private company, a private company, Name Dutch East India Company. In the Dutch name, Veronik the Ost Indische Company. Vok, it's a short version. And uh, uh, the capital and the basis is huge. Uh, 64 tons of gold. The staff number one, uh, 10,000. And uh, say under the flag, this is the flag of uh, uh, the Vok, of the Dutch East India Company, say, 160 large commercial vessel, which was the strategy of the Dutch people. Dutch people applied in the Indian Ocean, in the Asian trade, the Phoenician model. Phoenician model. You know the Phoenician. Phoenician, uh, Phoenician people invented the money, the modern form of the money before the Greek civilization, which is the Phoenician model. A Phoenician model or other name, a spider model, a spider model, didn't use the state in installation, no colonized large area, only one area, one area colonized, like a state. Southern part of Africa. It's a Boer or African colonization. Any other places founded only agency, like a spider, spider net and minimalized the expenses because they didn't necessarily organize a uh, founding of village, founding of cities and, and uh, managing of, uh, of, uh, of immigration, re-immigration, uh, emigration, everything. No, only agencies, the key uh, position. And uh, it was a state inside, sorry? Sorry, I am approaching because I have a lot of constant. Yeah, what's the difference between like, the Dutch colonies and, uh, for example, the colonies of other countries? Okay, the, the Dutch colony, uh, the classical the colonization, a state installation. Like, for example, when the Spanish people moved to uh, Mexico, cancel the local Aztec culture, it's a good example of Mexico City. Which was the name of Mexico City? Tenochtitlan, the capital of the Aztec Empire, castle and constructed a new buildings on the ruins of Aztec temples. And very interesting, it's possible I told you, somebody uh, watched the movie of Sicario. Sicario. Nobody. It's very famous uh, action figure. <laughs> it's not historical movie. But very interesting, when launched, there is a Mexican. Uh, when launched the Mexican Civil War, the general operation of the gangs cut it down to the head. Which culture used the cutting down of the head? As they capture, and very interesting, hope rising up from 
from the deep history, the custom and the, and the technology, historical technology of operation. Cutting down the film. If somebody saw the uh, movie of uh, uh, Mel Gibson, Sync direction and sync control of Asian affairs. Uh, basically, used a Phoenician model based on local agencies in the coastal area of Africa and mainly on the island and on the coastal area of India. 
agencies only, never occupied large area, except the southern part of Africa, of the Africans and Boer communities. But in the high position, directing position of uh, East India Company, the Dutch commercial empire had a discussion because some leader would like to state installation, other one not. But the most important argument of the faulty furniture model was minimizing the expense and maximizing of profit. And the majority, majority of leader of agency after the service time, for example, in Sri Lanka, moved back to Amsterdam because it was, it was only temporary job, not long life job, temporary job. Go back to Amsterdam. Good. One of the most important innovations of the Dutch trader was uh, integration to, to the local trade, country trade, because India consumed consume from spice a double quantity, quantity compared with, uh, uh, with uh, Europe. Therefore, the profit, if the Dutch people, Dutch trader, monopolize a uh, spice trade of India, it was a double of European profit. And uh, uh, there is a student from India, no? No? Uh, but I, I suppose majority of students visited in Indian restaurant, India restaurant. No? I suggest to you unbelievable experience. For example, when I tasted a real Indian, uh, uh, Indian meals in Indian restaurant in uh, Paris, when I visited in Paris, to my tongue was an unbelievable experience. Because to my experience is the Hungarian cooking a little bit simple, simple. But when I take one piece of meal to my mouth, my tongue revitalized. Some part of my tongue I felt so experiences with which I wasn't able to imagine before. A spicy cooking in the Indian, good Indian restaurant, unbelievable experience. Good. Uh, some picture about the uh, uh, flag leader uh, ship of uh, uh, Dutch East India Company. This is a map of Batavia, you can follow, so uh, uh, systematic uh, map, according to so systematic map constructed the uh, streets and uh, avenues and the buildings of Batavia. Good, Asian area occupied and maximized the profit. Look at the American, American direction. American trade try to conquer try to occupy similarly by Dutch trader. Therefore, after the closing of the uh, war period with the peace treaty, uh, founded a Dutch West India Company. West India Company. Do you know the story that Cristoforo Colombo it's thought that uh, discovered India. Therefore, in the public communication, until the 19th century, Americas and the West Indies was a synonym. And after the formation of the geography and the geographical guidebook, cancel the West India. But until the 19th century, West Indies and Americas mean the same. Therefore, founded first the Dutch East India Company and some decades, two decades later, founded the Dutch West India Company. And the strategy was the same, necessary to fight against the Portuguese, against the Brazil. And the Dutch trader and the Dutch sailor occupied San Salvador, Bahia, Curaçao, uh, and the Maurice de Nassau uh, declared as a governor of Brazil, a Dutch Brazil. But very interesting, the great operation for occupying and the conquering of American uh, economy was unsuccessful. Why? Because this area, American area, was empty world, empty world, very low density of population. In Americas, 
function only a state installation necessary to organize immigration, necessary to organize founding villages uh, uh, and founding uh, cities and founding a network of trade because empty world. The spider model functions well in Asia. Why? Because it's a full world, very high density of population, only necessary to behave as a parasite, as a parasite, as a spider for canalizing the profit. In America, empty world, empty world. Try to found uh, some city, which is the most famous city which founded by Dutch people. New York. Original name was New Amsterdam. Not by chance one of the district named Harlem. It's a Dutch city, named after the Dutch city. New York, founded by Dutch people. Because try to found different places, uh, 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 cities, some survived, some not. Okay, uh, original name of New York was New Amsterdam. It was a New Amsterdam, it's an English version. Uh, finally uh, lost by Dutch people. Why uh, close down, uh, sorry? I'm sorry, just to say, like, uh, what was that? Wait a little bit because. I just want to know how how would the English take over? Is it a war or a war? War, 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 war. Yeah, because uh, um, uh, it's too large. The, the population of, uh, of uh, the Netherlands two uh, two million, two million. It's not compared with uh, England, for example, six million people, approximately the population. It's a one to three, much higher. Uh, the background and the resources, human and the, and the, and the economic resources, similar. And uh, more than parts of, uh, of America that participate in the free nation in the whole world. More than part, uh, it's a French people uh, formed in the Ottawa and the, the, the St. Lawrence uh, River area. And the uh, uh, southern part is, is uh, formed in Jamestown first and later. Uh, um, Okay, but it's an like English uh, founder and the southern part is uh, Spanish. And the Dutch people would like to, uh, to, to uh, make a uh, somehow headquarter for that. And uh, New Amsterdam was a headquarter of the Dutch uh, uh, appearance in this area, but wasn't able to say. And this was the area of the English colonization. And the English trade is fought and attacked more times. This is small Dutch economy, and finally the Dutch people is capitulated and changed uh, to Suriname. Suriname is uh, on the uh, southern part of America. It was a change of area. It's a quite difficult in military and the peace this military operation. Change, I agree. And until the uh, age of colonization, Suriname was a part of uh, uh, Dutch uh, commercial and, uh, and imperial area. And both, of, for example, in the, in the I'm, I, I, I'm starting my career as, as a football player, and my generation heroes was a Johan Cruyff and the, and the great uh, generation of the 17th century, and a lot of people uh, who play in the in the Dutch uh, the football teams and the Dutch uh, Urania Dutch uh, national team came from Suriname. Therefore, it was a great uh, source of immigration from the southern part of America. And if somebody would like to uh, move to Netherlands, uh, somehow bought a uh, citizenship to Suriname, and it was a jumping place uh, to immigration to Europe. Okay, but that's uh, No, Suriname is southern part of America. Sure. Okay. Go back. Why wasn't able to Amsterdam monopolize to ever, to ever the leading position? It was a weakness, weakness of the country. Population of United Provinces 2 million, Amsterdam 200,000. Uh, the most important rival, England, 
three times larger, six million, and the London, half million. Yet, even in the middle of the 17th century France, it was the Russia. According to size of population and size of the country, of the contemporary Euro, 70 million and the Paris half million. And very important rival, local, local rival in the Baltic area, Sweden, with uh, uh, 2 million whole population, and uh, Stockholm is much smaller. Good. It's a Baltic area, which uh, for neighbors store a key and important area. No closing today's lecture, but change a little bit. And look at the next area, closing Amsterdam, and looking, uh, rising up to England. England, a new area of the uh, history of uh, uh, global economic system, because this is the age of national market. If we are looking at Venice, city-state. Look at Antwerp, a little bit same the city-state city, city state status. Genoa, city-state. Amsterdam, between the territorial state and the city-state, because very small country, very small country. Whole of the size of uh, the Netherlands, four, uh, uh, 40,000 uh, square kilometer. Half of Hungary, half of, less than half of Hungary somehow between the territorial and city-state. But the next generation of leading power and the leading city of the global economy are territorial and the national states. But look at the history of formation of the territorial and national states. The key, key question of us, how the economic coherence achieved with a given political unit. Because this country is very large, with local affairs and local economic unit, and how able unified to a national market and national state. Uh, look at the three conditions. The first condition, which performed by contemporary economic and political leader, welding together the number of short branch and quasi autonomous, often highly individual, individualized economies. Therefore, if we are looking, for example, a uh, history of Spain, Catalonia and Castilla, not only for national sense, but even in economic sense, two focused countries, Barcelona and Madrid. Barcelona and, uh, and, uh, and Sevilla, for example. The second one, a form of coherence imposed both by political ambition and the capitalist tension created by trade, foreign and long distance trade, and the last one, more likely to have developed uh, this market, this national market in the core area of uh, uh, global economy. But look at the spatial hierarchy of the traditional or modern world. The first one, if we are looking at the spatial integration, the smallest one, the smallest one, the marriage district. The size of one village, the size of one village changed from uh, to 200, 200 to 400 inhabitants. Very small, because to the second level of, uh, of uh, how the name is, uh, uh, level of, uh, of relatives, it's a second niece and nephew. Uh, the Roman Catholic Church, or generally the Church, prohibit, prohibited the marriage. The second level. The second niece and the... Why? Why prohibited? Genetical reason. Genetic. Contemporaries didn't know, but if somebody very close to the genetical condition, each DNA chain, there are a hurted position. If somebody very close relatives, very high the probability, the hurted part of the DNA change overlapping. And the consequence of that, sickness. Not by chance, the great dynasty of European history, like Habsburg, a lot of, lot of endemic, lot of endemic sickness mental problem and so on, so on, so on. 
This is the, it's very far, sorry for that, but look at, for example, a domestication of, of dogs. Uh, I, I was very surprised, some years ago, told to me one, one of my friends, a biologist, no species than dogs. No dog species, no. A dog, a subspecies of wolf. Chihuahua, it's a subspecies of wolf. <laughs> I, I am sure that the wolf would like to deny, obviously. But same species, which is the strategy of the breeding of different subspecies, Labrador or, or for example, uh, 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 Pitbull, or, or, which is a strategy. Define the characteristics and the breeding try to focus us to the reinforcing generation by generation the same characteristics. Decrease the size, for example, the, the teeth, the form of the face, and so on and so on. Therefore, in the dog breeding, one of the most important weakness, the typical sickness of the subspecies. Why? Because this is a strategy, the closest, the closest relatives breed with each other. But in the case of humans, a little bit different, but not so, so far, because we are animals. I am sure, I am animals. For example, if I, I am angry, I became very aggressive. And I suppose the majority of the audience behaves similar manner. Okay, but the smallest district, the marriage district, we can, we can see, uh, after some level of generation, no potential uh, husband or wife. Therefore, necessary to move in the area finding house, bride or bridegroom. Therefore, there is a, this is the smallest district of the contemporary Europe. The second one, city and the region. If we are living in a city and look at the market, we can identify from the person and origin of the, of the, of the uh, sellers or, 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 or people who would like to sell uh, something, uh, the region of the city. If you go, for example, to the uh, Marsh Tier, it's a central uh, food market of city, of Seger, you can identify the district of the city. And a lot of uh, geographers discussed about which is the ideal city, which is the optimal city. Uh, one of the most important uh, German urban historian, Wilhelm Abel, uh, to the traditional time defined the ideal city, uh, 3,000 dwellers. We can discuss about it. But in the traditional time, according to Abel, this was the optimal site. The third level, the pay canton or country, the country. It's a little bit larger area than one city. It's uh, possible uh, the homogeneity based economic unit, cultural identity, dialect. For example, I don't know in other languages, uh, uh, but uh, you know the, the play of Pygmalion. Pygmalion. In England, uh, in England, uh, uh, according to different area of England, the dialect is a quite good uh, and reliable uh, manner of definition of origin of people. In Hungary, a little bit same, a little bit the same. If someone, for example, uh, some Hungarian minority living in Serbia, and there is a special dialect, or Transylvania, there is a special dialect, not necessary to presentation, I can identify after the dialect, the people came from which area. Or in English, there is, for example, uh, to my experiences, there is a, a Central European dialect. Uh, very different the original native uh, language, or original language of uh, Polish people, Czech or Slovakian or, or, or Serbian or Hungarian, but there is a very special Central European Dialect, and if I participate in the uh, in the international conference after listening of presentation, I can uh, somewhere central European okay, the presenter a folklore. It's very important in the traditional time. The 
the cloth, it's no individual decision. If somebody takes a cloth, it's declared the social status, the marital status, and the age. Not necessarily prison. And very interesting, uh, in modern people walking in rural area and realized the people didn't tell so, so, so much than in urban area, because not necessary. Living together, the people know each other, the basic information, and on the, on the communication and meta-communication, we place uh, oral communication somehow. In the historical past, happened much more. Therefore, necessary only one look, and you can realize uh, a lot of information, social status, marital status, age, and, and the origin, for example, the background. And rustic architecture. The fourth level, the provinces. The provinces, like for example Lombardy, like Bavaria, like Saxony, like Transylvania. These area, the provinces, was the ideal size of traditional spatial system before the modern telecommunication, before the, the smartphone, before the internet. This was the optimal size. Look at, for example, the history of Germany. Before the unification of Germany, unfolded in province dimension. Look at the history of Italy, unfolded in Tuscany, in uh, Lombardy, in province uh, size. Jan Dont, a famous uh, Dutch uh, uh, social scientist, uh, wrote the living context of medieval society lay here. Neither in the kingdom, it's too large, nor in the seigneury, it's a estate, uh, the former being too vast and the rather unreal, the later too small. A political unit optimum size and the based economic system regional first. Good. And the fifth level, the territorial state. Very interesting, each territorial state from Russia to Portugal had a core area. A core area. A core area in London, around Paris, a core area in uh, uh, somehow in Burgas, in Leon, and later in Madrid, and core area in Buda, in the case of Hungary, and the forest of Moscow, in the case of Russia. Good. If we are looking at a life cycle of territorial state, we can identify four great life cycles. After the collapse of Holy, not Holy, uh, uh, Ro Roman Empire, the original Roman Empire, started on the age of migration, a great disintegration of territorial state. This is the dark Middle Ages. The second one, uh, between the 10th to the 13th century, the great integration, formation of Holy Roman Empire, formation of states, uh, whole of the Europe, and in consequence of 14th century crisis, a great dis disintegration, and in the 16th century started a reintegration. Recently, I don't know which is the direction of the territorial and the national states. Because in the frame of European Union, 10 years ago, majority agreed that the age of national states over. Recently, not so sure. Because there is a debate and a fight between the uh, national uh, state uh, and, uh, and the European Union uh, 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 development, de developing strategy of the European Union based to the strong national state or the structural unification. Good. Uh, if we are looking at history of the state, two types of the state we can identify. The first one, territorial state, and the second one, the city, city state. It's not so important, it's a typology of the city and the jump. Okay, look at the first territorial state, the first territorial state who tried and which tried to taking the leading city position 
uh, overtake from Amsterdam to Paris, France. If we are looking at France, uh, Fernand Roder wrote about the France. Uh, France was the first modern nation in political terms. In political terms. If we are looking at uh, area of France, there is a French student. Okay? Uh, it's a classical historical geographical term, le hexagon. Because if we are looking at uh, a form of the of the national uh, the, the, the space of the of the France, we can describe like a uh, hexagon. There is a, a, a red uh, uh, historical geographical book named to le hexagon. Size of the France changed a lot, changed a lot. The smaller one, 300,000 uh, uh, per kilometer, and the larger one, recent status because won the Second World War and uh, as a slaughter range moved back, uh, 600, uh, uh, 647,000 per kilometer. Changed a lot. But, very important historical peculiarity, this is the largest country, largest integrated country, whole of the whole of the Europe. In the medieval or the early modern time, it's not even possible to occupy. A lot of political leaders try to occupy. Uh, on the history of uh, 100 years war, on the history of uh, war between Habsburg, uh, Habsburg Emperor uh, Charles V, I spoke about, try to occupy. But in the contemporary technology, it's not possible. A little bit same situation like happened in the Second World War period uh, uh, with Russia. So large area from Napoleon to uh, Hitler to the uh, German Wehrmacht, not pass so large, not possible to conquering, to occupy whole of the country. But very difficult to direct because uh, some uh, order uh, moving uh, from Paris to Marseille, it's two, three weeks time. It's lost the relevance. It's not possible, didn't possible to occupy, but didn't possible direct efficient. Good. If we are looking at the French history, uh, uh, French, uh, Fr French, French history or the, or the history of French state, uh, quite a typical uh, manner described a uh, victim of gigantism. It's a giant. It's a spatial giant. Uh, won a hundred years war and formed a largest country in consequence of the success, the largest country of contemporary Europe. Finally, won a Habsburg Valois Wars, the second winner, the second victory, sorry. And the last one finally solved the problem of French civil wars. History of France, good example that the victory not the best for the country. Not the best uh, for the country because according to historical geographer, overgrew, overgrew uh, in consequence of series of victory. And somehow try to solve the problem of the huge giant uh, governing or, or directing a uh, form the first absolute state on the 17th century. Good. Look at the territory. Uh, 13 times larger compared with the Netherlands, one of the most important uh, rival. Four times uh, larger compared with England. 40, uh, sorry, 80 times uh, more arable land compared with the Netherlands. Look at the population. Uh, ten times to Dutch population, five times to English population, and uh, this is the basic data of gigantism. France reached the limit of territorial expansion, upper limit of course, but in consequence, the positive consequence of that, uh, resisted the foreign invasion. Okay, this will be the last uh, slide today and uh, the following lecture we will continue and we will close uh, the last item, the forming, forming and formation of the national state. Okay, thanks a lot for your attention. and.